In this lesson, you will learn how to convert rational numbers that are written as fractions into decimals. Before we get to any converting, let's just remember a little bit about rational numbers. Recall that a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction in the form p over q, where both p and q are integers and q is non-zero. Now this rational number can be expressed as a decimal, and there are two different outcomes for rational numbers when it comes to decimals. The first outcome is that you get a terminating decimal, and the other outcome is that you get a repeating decimal. For a terminating decimal, you have a fixed number of digits. So notice here that after the digit 6, the number does not continue on, and this is a good example of a terminating decimal. Now a repeating decimal does not end at a fixed number of decimal places. Instead, it has a repeating pattern of digits or a sequence of digits that continue on forever after the decimal point. So an example here, you have the number 23.2222, and this would continue on forever. And you can symbolize this by putting a bar over the digit that repeats, and that's what you have right here. And this means that the digit 2 will repeat forever for an infinite number of decimal places. And here's another scenario, and in this case you have the digits 5, 4 in this sequence repeating over and over again. And here you put the bar over the sequence that repeats to let the viewer of this number know that 54 will continue on forever after the decimal place. Now there are other numbers that are non-terminating but have no repeating number, and these are irrational. An example of an irrational number is given here. So you have 5.31678914214 dot dot dot. This would continue for an infinite number of decimal places, but there will be no repeating pattern, and this is why it's irrational. And the other type of example you hear is the square root of a non-perfect square. So 2 is not a perfect square. When you take the square root of this number, you get a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal of 1.4121356 dot 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 dot. This could go on forever. So now that we've reviewed rational numbers and the difference between irrational and rational, let's practice with some problems. Elizabeth has 4 thirds of a pie. Her friend Michelle wants 5 tenths of the pie, or 0 0.5. How much pie will Elizabeth have left over if she gives some to Michelle? So she's going to give Michelle all that she wants. So how would we find what's left? What's left can be found using subtraction. So you have, this is the total amount, 4 thirds, and subtract away the amount that Michelle wants, which is 0 0.5 or 5 tenths. We can't do this subtraction unless both numbers are written as fractions or both written as decimals. So I'm going to convert this fraction here into a decimal. Now recall that a rational number has the form p over q, where q is not 0, so q does not equal 0. So what I notice is that 4 thirds is a rational number, and in that case I can divide the numerator by the denominator. The fraction symbol is just another way of expressing the division of the numerator by the denominator. So to do that, we'll use long division. 3 is the divisor, and 4 is the dividend. So how many times does 3 go into 4? 3 goes into 4 one time. 1 times 3 is 3. So now you subtract. 4 minus 3 is 1. And now you want to divide 3 into 1. Now you can't do that because 3 is greater than 1. So what you need to do is add a decimal point here and also put one above. Now throw in a 0. Bring the 0 down and ask yourself now, how many times does 3 go into 10? 3 goes into 10 three times, and I'm going to make this a little bit longer because we're going to keep going. Three goes in three times. Three times three is nine, and now do the subtraction. Ten minus nine is one. Three does not go into one because it's bigger, so we need to include another zero. Bring that zero all the way down here. Three goes into ten three times. Three times three is nine, and you can subtract again. You get ten minus nine is one. Again, you can't divide there, so you need to include a zero. Bring it all the way down to here. And now 3 goes into 10 three times. And you could keep doing this. I notice that there's already a pattern forming. Every time I get, uh, I always have a subtraction here where I'm left with 1 and I have to include another 0. And so what you get is that these digits after the decimal point are going to repeat. Now that I have the decimal for the fraction, we can do the subtraction. So I'm going to write 1.3333. I think that's enough for now. You know these are going to repeat forever. And now subtract away 0 0.5. And what I'm going to do here is include um, a bunch of zeros 
after the digit 5 because we're going to have decimal places that we need to subtract. Now 0 0.50000 is the same thing as 0 0.5, so you haven't changed that number, and that's okay to do. So now subtract. 3 minus 0, you get 3. 3 minus 0, 3. 3 minus 0, 3. 3 minus 0, again, 3. And then you get to this point, you have 3 minus 5. So what you need to do is break the 1. And when you do that, you break the 1 into tenths, so you get 10 tenths, which means now you have 13 tenths over here. Now subtract 13 tenths minus 5 tenths, leaves you with 8 tenths in that place. Now you have a 0 in the 1's place, 0 minus 0 is 0. So after you do the subtraction, or after Elizabeth gives her friend Michelle some pie, Elizabeth will be left with 0 0.83333, and this would continue forever, so I'm going to put a bar. She's left with this much pi. So she's left with about 8 tenths of pi. Now let's solve another problem together. In this problem, you want to convert 14 fifths into a decimal. To convert a fraction into a decimal, divide the numerator by the denominator. Once you start dividing, you can see if the quotient, or the decimal, which is what it will be, repeats or terminates. So let's use long division. If you want to divide this, your divisor is 5. The denominator is always the divisor, so you have 5. I'll use a thicker pen. You 5 divided into 14. So how many times does 5 go into 14? 5 goes into 14 2 times. 2 times 5 is 10. And when you subtract 14 minus 10, you're left with 4. Now, you can't divide 5 into 4 because 4 is smaller. So what you need to do is put a decimal point here and above. And that includes some zeros. So now bring this zero down and ask yourself, how many times does 5 go into 40? Well, 5 times 8 is 40, so let's put that up there. And 5 times 8 is 40, and now you go to do the subtraction, and you get a remainder of 0. So now you're done with the division. That means that the fraction 14 fifths can be expressed as a decimal as 2.8. In this lesson, you've learned how to convert fractions into decimals. Thanks for watching.